Right then, ladies and gentlemen, today we are getting our final look at Battlefield Hardline before the release day. I've got footage from all of the maps in the game today, um, but I'm only going to be showing you footage of the block, and I'm going to be showing you footage of some of the pre-order weapons as well. I'm going to speak about those later in the video, because right now I want to focus on the block. But very quickly, I do want to go out and say that the footage that I'm displaying right now may not be up to the same standard that I usually put here on my channel, and that is for one good reason. This is PlayStation 4 gameplay. That's right, I had to take the plunge into 64 player conquest, most of the press that I was playing with play on console, and I was armed only with my controller and a will of hope that I was able to hold my own. To my surprise however, I did end up with most of my games being a positive kill to death ratio, and I ended up in the top 5 of the leaderboard most games that I played, so I was pretty happy with that result. But on the other hand, I did find it really hard to string together kills, and as such, I've done the best that I can to extract the clips that I think are going to be interesting to you guys from nearly 8 hours worth of footage that I captured yesterday. So, the block. For those of you out there who state that Hardline has had a further downgrade in destruction, well, here's Visceral's answer to you. Some of the maps within Hardline, yes, I'll agree, aren't that great in destruction, but this, this map is insane. Perhaps the smallest of the nine shipping within the base game, full of tight shortcuts and alleyways planted right in the middle of a motel or an apartment complex. This is where the destruction makes you really go wow within Hardline. You can rip through walls with bullets, you can explode them with M320s and grenades, you can throw C4 through the windows, run back, hit the button, and the whole ground floor will get ripped to shreds. There is so much destruction here, and it all changes how the map plays. And you can actually bring all four sections of the apartment building crashing to the ground. You have to destroy all the walls and everything inside it, but it doesn't just fall as one object. It splits into four sections as well. So if you've destroyed, let's say, the left bottom hand corner section, that bit will fall down before the top right section. So it can change gameplay quite a lot. because You don't really know which bit's going to come down because where's all the action happening? It changes every time. Outside of that motel complex, though, there are two larger alleyways that sit either side of it and they've got really, really long lines of sight, and they make for a great sniper location on this map. Being how small it actually is, you wouldn't think that the lines of sight would be all that brilliant here, but you'd be wrong. And who's to say, if you do want to snipe, but you want to get in the thick of the action, there's no one stopping you going upstairs into the destructible building, breaking a hole in the outside wall, and laying in wait whilst all the enemies run around the corner, and you take them out one by one. If you want to experience all these different types of game styles, then the block has got them nailed down pretty well. Just a quick side point here, this map doesn't support hotwire, and there's literally no space for vehicles on this map, but it does support conquest. So if you do want to experience some sort of domination game mode style within Hardline, Visceral didn't choose to include that in the base game, and I'm not really sure, it could make an appearance in a DLC, who really knows, but... The map, block, and on conquest, if you want to play like a domination style game mode, then this is the map for you. Now, onto these pre-order weapons, the ACWR, the CAR 556, and the L85A2. These things caused a lot of controversy recently, and they're being used as a reward for gamers who choose to pre-order Battlefield Hardline. Lots of people have also claimed that these three weapons are the best in the game, and in pre-ordering, you will gain an advantage by having these weapons early. Well, during my experimentation yesterday and having spoken to a lot of people who were there, fear not, because we don't believe that that's the case. At least not, but well, totally in my opinion, I don't think that's the case. I used the ACWR in today's video to, to show it off to you guys, basically, but in my experience, I found that the G36E was just as good in all the situations that I used it in the weapons both have good rates of fire, nice close spread, fast reload, and all round are really good weapons for medium and long range engagements. So the ACWR has a counterpart that's already in the base game that you don't need to pre-order to get access to. The L85A2, which I'll show off in another video, suffers in the medium to close range firefights because it's got a lower rate of fire than most of the assault rifles and carbines. 
and not to mention some of those super fast PDWs like the K10. The L85 works well with like a 4 time scope and using it for bursting long range targets, so if you're going to try and run into bank job with this thing with a 4 time scope, which I did to start with, it doesn't go down too well. This thing only really works at longer ranges. And the Car 556? Well that thing just has a really large magazine, and I found it to be really useful because I suck at aiming with a controller, and I needed those extra bullets, but apart from that, it's just another standard assault rifle. And what I'm really trying to say is that these weapons may have been made a pre-order bonus, but that doesn't automatically mean that they're going to be better than the rest. They all have rivals in the main base game anyway, they're just three extra weapons. Yeah, two of them were in Battlefield 4, but, but so what? The L85 behaves differently in Hardline than it did to BF4. Think of it more as like the Battlefield 3 version of the L85. The ACWR is a great versatile weapon, but it suffers at long range. And the CAR 556 just rewards players with extra bullets, just like the ARM does, which is already included in the base game. But there we are, done and dusted. I managed to educate you on the block, told you how it worked and showed off some gameplay, and I managed to tell you that the three pre-order weapons really aren't something that you have to worry about. I did hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be posting another one in a couple of hours with lots of other gameplay from maps that you haven't seen yet, Plus, I'll be showing off epic Levolution events from Hollywood Heights and Everglades, two of things that I don't think have been shown off in gameplay yet either. But thank you very much for watching today. If you could leave me a rating and a comment, that would be absolutely fantastic. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.